Today we're reading from Canto 4, Chapter 20, Text 30. You might be wondering why I may or may not be, I don't know how it's coming across speaking a bit. Let me put the volume up a bit low. That's because here in New York it is 4.41 a.m. <laughs> I'm actually um, getting ready, or well, I am ready, but I'm going to leave soon to go to the Bhakti Centre where I have DT services, dressing the DTs. So I'm going to be doing this reading now before I leave, just after 5 a.m. So today, as I said, we're reading from Canto 4, and oh yes, so that's the reason, I didn't even explain. So the reason why I'm speaking a bit low is because it is early and I am at home and we have people living in apartment upstairs and people living in apartment downstairs, I don't know. I'm assuming they're sleeping, so, <laughs> so I just need to be careful. Okay, so it's Canto 4, Chapter 20, Text 30. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Check the verse 30. My dear Lord, what you have said to your unalloyed devotee is certainly very much bewildering. The allurements you offer in the Vedas are certainly not suitable for pure devotees. People in general bound by the sweet words of the Vedas engage themselves again and again in fruitive activities enamoured by the results of their actions. Hmm, interesting. Pol Pot. Srila Narottam Das Thakur, a great Acharya of the Gaudiya Sampradaya, has said that persons who are very much attached to the fruitive activities of the Vedas, namely Karmakanda and Jnanakanda, are certainly doomed. In the Vedas, there are three categories of activities known as Karmakanda, fruitive activities, and Jnanakanda, philosophical research and upasana kanda, worship of different demigods for receiving material benefits. Those who are engaged in karma kanda and jnana kanda are doomed in the sense that everyone is doomed who is entrapped by this material body. Whether it is a body of a demigod, a king, a lower animal or whatever. I'll just turn off put my phone on silent. The sufferings of the threefold miseries of material nature are the same for all. Hmm. Yeah, interesting. The reason why I said interesting is because the previous verse, Maharaj Prithu is talking about people getting bound by the sweet words of the Vedas in the sense, actually more so by the fact that it says, more so by the fact that they're enamoured by the results of of their actions and what am I going to get out of this if I do this fast if I do this austerity what is the result it's interesting you know, um, especially someone growing up as a Hindu and that too in in the West in England then obviously you're influenced by yeah your Western life upbringing but at the same time at home it was like okay today we're going to be doing this fasting or today we don't eat this or today we only eat this and like, why <laughs> and it's interesting nine times out of ten i mean you'd know who you were doing it for what personality but a lot of the times it was explained um why you're doing it in the sense of either because if you don't do it this will happen or if you do it this will occur more it was more actually this will happen to you which is wasn't so nice but it's, so it's interesting it's like you engage in these um rituals or activities so-called pious activities or religious activities for what is the result good or bad meaning you don't want the bad results so, okay if i do this i won't get this result or if i do it i will get this result so it's interesting it was 
not necessarily always from a mood of how Prabhupada would is preaching more just to please God just to serve the supreme personality of Godhead it's interesting that people can get up, caught up in the results so here in the Prabhupada it's also explained that yeah people become attached to the fruitive activities of the Vedas um, let me see and basically it says that we're doomed <laughs> because we become entrapped in the material body which also makes sense because I guess you're creating more karma whether it's good or bad and hopefully we are assuming it's good I'm getting pious credits for my my fasting and my sacrifices as it were but Prabhupada says this just keeps us bound more in the material world in the material body because in one sense you have to come back to enjoy those um, enjoy those fruits alright continue with the Prabhupada cultivation of knowledge to understand one's spiritual position is also to a certain extent a waste of time <laughs> Because the living entity is an eternal part and parcel of the Supreme Lord, his immediate business is to engage himself in devotional service. Pritu Maharaj therefore says that the allurement of material benedictions is another trap to entangle one in this material world. He therefore frankly tells the Lord that the Lord's offerings of benedictions in the form of material facilities are certainly causes for bewilderment. A pure devotee is not at all interested in bhukti or mukti. Interesting how Pritu Maharaj has gone from wrestling, not literally, but putting up that example of wrestling or fighting for the service of menial service to Lord Vishnu so wrestling or fighting with Lord Vishnu's wife Lakshmi Devi he's gone from that to now telling Lord Vishnu that look why you put all this stuff in the Vedas why are you why are you distracting people or getting making them um yeah not making them become trapped and, and entangled in this material world because they're looking at all the benedictions that you've put forward <laughs> interesting <laughs> Go backwards, going backwards and forwards between Lord Vishnu and Prithu Maharaj because if you remember when Prithu Maharaj, when Lord Vishnu comes down because this is all to do this pastime is still regarding the horse sacrifice which okay it's concluded in the sense that Prithu Maharaj conceded upon the good advice of Lord Brahma and then Lord Vishnu comes down but when Lord Vishnu comes down he at first um <laughs> he starts to tell off Prithu Maharaj and you know it's like wait a minute and now you've got Prithu Maharaj initially you know it's like yeah now it comes to his senses and I'm so engrossed and attached to you Lord and I'm going to have to push your wife out of the way because I just want to serve you and she can do something else. And now he's like, well, why, do you put, why are you confusing everyone with the Vedas and the benedictions that comes with all these fruit of it and karmakanda and that? Why are you doing that? <laughs> okay. All right. The Lord sometimes offers benedictions to the neophyte devotees who have yet understood that material facilities will not make them happy mm, that is the answer in the Chaitanya Charitamrita the Lord therefore says that a sincere devotee who is not very intelligent may ask some material benefit from the Lord but the Lord being omniscient does not generally give material rewards but on the contrary takes away whatever material facilities are being enjoyed by his devotee so that ultimately the devotee will completely surrender unto him mm. wow <laughs> I've always had issues with that part taking away the material facilities I'm sure there's another way to do it Krishna I'm sure <laughs> I mean, for most of us, even if the deity form was to turn around, like I'm going to address the deities 
soon that's why i keep looking at the clock to make sure that i'm not late but i'm gonna go and dress the deities soon and i assure you if they turned around and spoke to me <laughs> that would make an effect on me it might be more favorable than taking away everything i've got but anyway <laughs> anyway but the first part of this um paragraph actually answers the question in terms of all the points that I was making with regards to the previous paragraph because here Prabhupada says the Lord sometimes offers benedictions to the neophyte devotees neophyte who have not yet understood that material facilities will not make them happy so it's really interesting it's like here as if you're weaning someone off um an addiction which material sense gratification is because we just cannot give it up and that's why we um yeah you see people who need partners as it were marriage partners girlfriends boyfriends this or even if they've got marriage partners still i need a girlfriend and boyfriend or whatever you know and um, money home facility position whatever it is we need that so it's like taking to the uh, taking to the activities that are prescribed in the Vedas it's like being weaned off that okay if you just refrain from it for can you refrain from it for half a day fast can you refrain from it from a day fast or or five days of not doing this or chaturmas for example don't eat this for this month don't do that for that month and but you'll get this in return it's, it's like okay because if you just say just don't do it and that's it it's, it's it's no one you know we all know that those of us for example who go on diets i want to be healthy i want to lose weight you have to really be um strong-willed and really have those senses under control and really be focused otherwise they do say give it a year or two or three and you just go back to where you was or sometimes even two or three days or weeks and we go back to where we were because we don't have that higher taste so sometimes it requires that okay i'll just give up sugar okay i've done that mm, okay i've done that for half a like for six months or a year okay then i'm gonna give up dairy i'm gonna do this do that in order in, to just you know acquire some level of health whatever so yeah it's like being weaned off so krishna has to give these um benedictions to keep us interested and like a child isn't it if any if you've ever seen a child holding on to something that they should not be doing or holding and that grip there's no stronger grip i'm telling you than a child a little baby's grip when you're trying to get something out of their hand however put your nowadays it's the mobile phone so put your mobile phone in front of their face or your keys or something that grip which is tighter than i don't know i don't know i'm trying to think of some i don't know the incredible hulk or that shows my age and that but anyway <laughs> like tighter than the incredible hulk's grip it will just go like this effortlessly the hand will just release when oh i want the keys or i want the mobile phone or i want the ipad so that's what krishna is doing it's like let go of your material attachments no 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 way okay just can you just let go if i give you this you know if you do this fast you'll get this if you do this sacrifice you'll get this and then you slowly let go maybe not let go totally but a little bit let go in order to get the other thing so that's what that's how or why those benedictions are there one example anyway of why they're there in the vedas okay final paragraph in other words the offering of benedictions in the form of material profit is never auspicious for the devotee the statements of the vedas which offer elevation to heavenly planets in exchange for great sacrifices are simply bewildering therefore in bhagavad gita chapter 2 text 42 the lord says yam imam pushpitam vacham pravadanti avit Paschita, the less intelligent class of men, a vipaschita, a 
attracted by the flowery language of the Vedas, engage in fruitive activities to become materially benefited. Thus they continue life after life in different bodily forms to search very, very hard. Mm. So it's like a... I don't know if this is the correct term, but I mean, as in to apply here, but maybe it's an English term, willow the wisp. Maybe someone can correct me. <laughs> it's like a willow the wisp. It's like you're always searching um, due to being enamored or attracted by something. So you're, like, it says here that to one, you know, you're always searching to be materially benefited benefited and thus it continues life after life in different bodily forms as well and we just keep searching it's interesting actually it's quite scary actually so and the paragraph starts off by saying in other words the offering of benedictions in the form of material profit is never auspicious for the devotee interesting that's quite a powerful statement that um because i'm i actually i keep thinking of this book well the nectar of devotion because if you if you've read the nectar of devotion it gives you benedict no is it benedict yeah benedictions if you do this you know spiritual activities as these are but if you do this you get this if you do that you get that so it's interesting but i always felt it was like one step above or more than one step above just the just the vedas i don't mean that in a derogatory term because it was always geared if you do this it was always geared towards krishna directly in some form or the other or his devotees but it's it's interesting because when i first read that book i was like wow that's that's so like I found it very appealing and attractive because I was getting benedictions for chanting Hare Krishna or maybe not, yeah, but just worshipping Tulsi or going to the temple on this day and doing this or observing Ekadashi. It's, it's, an, it's interesting and it's interesting how the, as we as conditioned souls require that um, validation or I guess more it's a benediction of like if you study really hard yeah okay but what am i going to get out of it oh you're going to get a certificate to show look you got university certificate or gcse or a levels but i got something to show that i did that austerity or if i work really hard at work i'm expecting a pay rise or i'm expecting every year i'll get more annual leave or i'm expecting some sort of um reciprocation as it were so it's almost like that engaging in these activities that we find in the Vedas or any type of spiritual activity some you know we're expecting something even if it's salvation I'm expect so I'm just realizing this fan that's blowing on the side making my hair funny <laughs> it's very hot here by the way even though it's just turned 5 a.m it's very hot <laughs> anyway sorry i got distracted so yeah it's interesting to hmm, to just engage for the sake of i'm just gonna please you krishna i just wanna like even now i'm gonna leave very soon <laughs> to go to the temple and um and i, I why would i go i mean it's 5 a.m now it's it's very dark outside and um yeah it's like why am i doing it because clearly i am not doing it because i have to do it mind you just so it's clear but i like it i like the dressing the deities you know decorating them putting the turban on i like it so it's like i'm getting something out of it i'm not doing every single service that's available on that schedule and then you think but why not you know why haven't i chosen to do this this and this so i guess we it's only natural that we are attracted to something that i'm gonna feel i get something out of or feel good about and the important or the point i'm learning here is somehow therefore do that which is gonna 
free us free us and release us from the bonds of the material body as it were and not encage us or as it says here make us continue life after life in different bodily forms as well to keep searching so Hare Krishna I hope that was helpful and I'm very sorry if I mean I've um, yeah, I'm going to turn the volume up as high as it can when I upload it. But like I said, I'm just conscious how early it is. <laughs> so I don't want to talk too loud. But thank you very much for listening. Hare Krishna.